Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dolbeck. Today we are going to speak about Black Ops 6 and what it does to your brain. Because, you know, with the new Omni movement and uh, the way they are creating the game, you are going to feel so much more immersion. Like, when people played Black Ops 6 and come back to Modern Warfare 3, they was not even willing to play almost anymore. Like, my brain was not willing to play Modern Warfare 3. I, I was, I had to be like, okay, I'm gonna try again. It's, but... The immersion is not the same. So you see, the everything that is happening into your brain into Black Ops 6 is just different because you are like free. And more you're gonna have freedom into a game, more you're gonna feel like you're into the game and playing it. Like everything that your character cannot do into a game gonna break your sense of being immersed into it. Like you're not going to feel into the game. You're just going to feel like a player playing a character. But when you can do everything you want, like climbing on the stuff, like adding climbing was one of the great things in Call of Duty, sliding. You see, it's all those small things that create a better immersion. And uh, even if people say, I better like the old school Call of Duty, na 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 those new things that they added are very good. I, lo I love them. And it's way better for the player retention. Even if people don't see it. Like, if you want to speak Black Ops 1 when it came out in Modern Warfare 2. Just because it was the only shooter out. Now there are so many games that it's hard to have the same player base. But for the player, re player retention though, like... It's like when I play Call of Duty, I have a hard time to stop. It's just so good right now. Um, and then with Black Ops 6, it, it's just way better. Like, I feel like Modern Warfare 2 was into a sweet spot. I had hard time to see Modern Warfare 3 be better. Like, uh, it, Modern Warfare 3 was like just a be, uh, DLC of Modern Warfare 2019. And it's perfect. It's what I wanted. Like, this is what people want. When you have a perfect game, why not create a DLC? Like it's perfect like this and people will buy and i'm ready to buy a good dlc for it like that but then adding omni movement imagine modern warfare 3 but with omni movement that is going to be amazing like the game that i'm waiting for right now it's not even black ops 6 it's the game after black ops 6 it's the modern warfare but with the omni movement you see like Black Ops is those games that are innovating and like finding new things and trying different shit. And it's very good when we play Black Ops. Black Ops 1 was one of my favorite games ever. And then they're going to take those things and apply it to the Modern Warfare. Like let's say the Blackbird, the Advanced UAV. When they put the Advanced UAV into Black Ops 1 and then they put it into Modern Warfare after it, it, it had, it, it was perfect. Like, uh, you see, Black Ops are, have just, they are just creating those little things that make the game way better and then it's still in Call of Duty forever and we like it like that. Like, uh, and believe me, I'm pretty sure that they are not done with the jetpack era, all right? I'm pretty sure one day they're gonna come out with the omnidirectional movement Call of Duty jetpack. Like, why not? I'm if they do it one year, it's not that bad for them, and they they can even like just put two Call of Duty this year and have one jetpack and one non-jetpack. You know, like or maybe adding a special game mode into the Call of Duty with some special map with jetpack zone. You see where you can like run on the wall. Remember how you can in the past run on the wall. It was like, amazing. So yeah, today we are going to speak about what Black Ops 6 is doing to your brain. I did the research and I'm going to kind of read what they say about it, like what they say about when you are getting immersed into a game, what it does to your brain. So you're going to be ready with Black Ops 6, like what it's going to do, all right? So 
every time I'm gonna say like three positive effect and three negative effect, and there's a few like that, all right? So people say that when you are like immersed into a game, you have enchanted attention. Like it's uh, it helps to enchant your attention. After that, and whatever you're gonna do in your life, you're gonna have a better attention. It's good to practice passions and stuff like this. Uh, cognitive skills like uh, problem solving and special awareness multitasking, they say. Flow state. Immersion can lead to a flow state where player experience deep focus, loss of time perception, and balance between challenge and skill. Uh, so, yeah, I can say that uh, sometimes you're, when you're into the middle of the game, sometimes it feel like lasted three minutes a negative effect the addiction like you can see it after black ops 6 come out people wanted more and then they they took out from us black ops 6 and people was like give it back to me all the, the people on the internet like uh, raging about black ops 6 uh Reduced real world interaction, yes. So this is a negative effect for sure. Like the people, uh, you know, your girlfriend's gonna be mad. Distorted time perception, yeah, that's a good and a bad thing. When you want to escape your life, it's good, and when you don't want to escape your life, it's bad. Distorted time perception, you know. So uh, we are back into the positive effect. Ancien said. Visual processing, immersive gaming can improve visual attention and processing speed, helping players to quickly and accurately identify visual information. Better short-term memory, faster reaction time, a negative effect, sleep issue. I guess, yeah, if you want to keep playing, you're gonna have sleep issue, it just makes sense. And yeah. Excessive gaming can sleep, lead to sleep issue. Everyone know it. We all know it. Yeah. Mental health concerns. So, my what I think about mental health is mostly like uh, if you're too much into the game, you don't see your real life enough, and then you have mental health. It's just for sure. Like you self-esteem, everything. Like uh, because you're lacking to do other things sometimes in your life, so the self-esteem going down. Uh, cognitive biases. I'm not sure about this one. Excessive exposure to your excessive exposure to violent game can create cognitive bias such as heightened sensitivity to violent stimuli. Mm, I don't think so. Like uh, you're so much used to react. So violence that when someone is violent to you, you're gonna react harder, I guess. It's hard to say, seriously, uh, maybe. But uh, at the same time, if you are used to always interact with people, you're gonna have easier, easier time to like control yourself. Like, uh, more you have experience into something, easier it is to control it. And like, it's just like that with uh, violence, you, you can say. Uh, positive effect, ancient said learning, therapeutic benefit. Immersive gaming are being, being used in therapy to help with conditions like PTSD, anxiety, and depression. Uh, Call of Duty helping with PTSD? Nah, I don't think so, bro. Those people who make those, um, those web pages with those information are, are kind of dumb sometimes. But, you know, to just take, like... All the information is on there and make a quick, yeah, uh, quick, quick mix. It's just how reporters are made. Okay, social skill. Yes, the, the multiplayer enchant social skill. I learned English through gaming, kind of. I did have a bit of English at school, but I was not like listening and like I had bad notes, like you see what I mean. Uh, negative effect, desensitization to violence. Not really, I mean, like, 
in real life violence always gonna do something to you for sure physical health issue mm, yeah if you don't move enough you need to keep moving when you're a gamer uh what it was saying the pro is uh i think it was three hours in a row never more than three hours in a row and then you take an hour break and then you can do three hours again and then an hour break and then you you need to sleep eight hours a day and uh, into your eight hour you can uh, can do twice four hour instead of one big eight hour this this is the best way to do this is what i tell you like i tried it and uh, even into it, real life work it's kind of the same uh, i i did a lot of, of uh, other word for some reason uh physical health issue reduced academic performance if you're thinking about a video video game you're not thinking about your real life but at the same time if you're trying to learn english or any language there there's some game that you can put in english like if you did a game in english and then you try it in spanish uh, you're gonna learn spanish uh, it's gonna help you for sure like uh, you did it once in your language and then you do it again for sure uh, and then there's in mathematics like there's a lot of game that involves that mathematics in so it's not too bad and like resource management uh, like into uh, if I take Resident Evil 4 as example, if you don't do good resource management, you're gonna just have no ammunition left into the boss fight, and you almost need to reset at the start of the game because there's a saving point, and if you save without munition, you're fucked. And, and I knew it happened to me. I when I did Resident Evil 4 the first time, I was a Nintendo GameCube. And uh, man, I did not know a shit about life. So yeah, positive effect, enhanced learning. I think they spoke about that before. So you see, it contradicts itself, saying reduced academic performance, and the other one say enhanced learning and positive effects. So you need to not listen to all those uh, reporters sometimes. Therapeutic benefits, social skill. I I feel like we already seen those. So yeah, this is kind of it. Seriously, uh, I felt it when I played Black Ops Six. It did something to my brain. I felt addicted, and when I did not have the game there anymore, and I was back into my normal factory, it was bad. But at least I had a bow there, and with the bow, you cannot really use the omni movement anyway to shoot with it. So it was not a big matter for me. And same with the throwing knife. It's gonna be nice to like run on the side and throw knife and throw tomahawk at the same time but i don't know i'm still not used to it and we did not have the perk you see there's gonna be a perk maybe into black ops 6 when you can run with your tomahawk like this ready to shoot and maybe you're gonna be able to run on the side and, and with your tomahawk ready to shoot and then shoot and if they do that then that's gonna be crazy so yeah this video is long enough like that uh, i wish everyone a good day Peace out.